With the Trio Daily Cup already in full force and the Trio FNCS just around the corner, I think now is as good as time as ever for us to start talking about trios. And in this video specifically, I want to talk about the best draw spots almost hand tailored around the trios meta that you guys are going to have to play through. What I mean by this is that the spots that we're going to be talking about in this video might not be the best for solos or maybe even duos or squads, but for trios, they're going to work absolutely perfectly. So if you and your teammates are still undecided on what spot you guys want to go to have all of you guys watch this video and then come to a conclusion afterwards but before the video begins i do obviously have a tiny favorite ask of you guys and that is to subscribe to the channel if you guys are new about 90 percent of the people that watch my videos right now aren't subscribed to the channel and i want to hopefully let you guys know so you can help me change that also if you're excited for the video make sure to leave a like leaving a like actually helps me with the algorithm it means that it promotes me more and it helps me grow my channel more so if you guys are appreciative of the content i make i'd really appreciate that with that said let's get right into the video Alrighty, guys hopping into the first drop spot i want to make sure that you guys know about salty springs and all the benefits it has to offer for the trios meta now first things first we're going to take a look at the chest spawns of course at salty springs you have five houses three of the houses have two chests in each house two of the houses also only have one chest in each house so it's going to be very important that you guys know how to drop for the spot if you guys want to win every single time now in my personal experience dropping here for trios and solos this is actually not a very contested area especially with the amount of variety on this map when you're talking about the mythic areas and and POIs that actually do have more chest and floor loot. So if you're looking for an area that won't leave you super stacked, but will also guarantee that you're gonna make a substantial amount of end games, this is gonna be your spot. I'm gonna give you guys a pro gamer tip right here, and I want you guys to, instead of landing at your houses, and we'll talk about how you guys wanna drop for these houses in just a second, but instead of doing that, if you're uncontested, I want you guys to make your way north, and before you land, I want you guys to all meet up at this one center point right here at the bridge. This is the slurp barrel which means that if you're uncontested at Salty, you guys can all get the Slurp Barrel before rotating back to Salty with no loot at all. You guys can get the loot here from Slurp Barrel, one chest, and also it's gonna give everybody on your team 200 HP off the rip. And yeah, this is just gonna make it way easier for you guys because if three people need extra shield and you already have 200 HP, you don't have to pop any for yourself. Regardless, let's hop into the game and show you guys how you wanna be dropping for trios. Alrighty guys, so as we drop into Salty Springs, once again, this is going to apply only when you're contested. If you're uncontested, you guys are going right over there you guys are going for that slurp barrel and that's going to give you guys all 200 hp but if you guys are contested this is how you guys are going to want to drop now keep in mind five houses and what i want you guys to think of is i want you guys to double drop at this middle house and i want one solo to drop at this gray house there are two chests in this house so that means that one person can get each chest and then the second person can get absolutely stacked at that house keep in mind this house right here is segregated from all the other houses meaning that that house can loot freely, while these two players can scout out. If you guys control this house, you guys can watch all these other three houses. So once you get in here, there's a chest up top. Sick, diamond chest. Obviously, I'm in a battle labs right now, so you guys aren't seeing the real depiction of the loot you're going to get. There's also an underground area that has a couple more spawns. Keep in mind, there is a third chest here as well. Gaining in loot, you guys are gaining in positioning. You guys have absolutely the best positioning when you're at the spawn. So you guys are all going to be together on top of this roof. And you guys wait, specifically if you see someone go brick potentially, someone goes brick over here, you guys are just going to want to wait, wait for that teammate to regroup. And the moment he tries to regroup with his other teammates that are at these other houses, you guys are going to beam the living heck out of him. Alrighty folks, we're going to be moving on to the second drop spot that all of you guys must be putting in your rotations, and that's going to be risky reels. Now the first thing to know about risky reels is that you're going to definitely want to have control of the main house and billboard. Those are the two spots that you need to have control of if you want to actually win risky reels every single time. Just these two drop spots have five of the 12 chests and a majority of the floor loose. If you're not able to take control of these two spots, one of which of course billboard being giving you the high ground, you're not going to have a lot of fun here at risky. We're going to about that more when we actually drop in but i have a few more things i want to talk to you guys about now two other reasons why i really do like risky over a lot of the different spots in this season's meta is simply due to the fact that you guys are going to have really really solid positioning which is going to mean that you're not going to die on rotations in the mid game as often the worst case scenario is zone pulls maximum south and you're just going to be on the edge of first zone so really not a bad trade-off at all now there's actually quite a handful of scrapped cars that are not removed from the game right now that are still chilling in the middle of risky reels that means your team 
is going to have at least, you know, one or 200 metal each. That's going to assist you when you rotate, you're going to get a little bit more metal. And you're basically going to be a little bit ahead of the curve on everybody else because there's a huge metal scarcity right now in the map. And as a trio, you guys need to make sure you're set. And Risky puts you in a good position to get set. With that said, let's hop in and get a bird's eye view of things. You want to be around 250 meters, 200 to 250 meters away, depending on which side the bus comes from. If you guys want to land right on top of the roof here. Now, the reason why landing on the roof is very important is simply because you guys are going to be able to assist your teammate if they end up having to fight someone with no mats. You have a chest, three floor spawns, and chances are you guys are going to get an AR just like you see me got right here. I have a FAMAS here that's going to put me in a position where I can come back up on this ledge and shoot anyone that tries jumping down. All three opponents are going to now be scuffed looking for loot on the sides. But basically if you land billboard, you and your teammate are going to push around the left. Both of you guys want to push around the left. If this side isn't looted, you guys can quickly grab a chest right here shoot out the legs under the chest and you guys want to keep playing this left side Alrighty, folks so number three on this list is actually going to be one of the og drop spots and one of my personal favorites is going to be retail row now although retail row hasn't been my favorite spot on the previous few seasons i will say that this season offers a very stark advantage for all you players that are trying to get a competitive edge in this season this season actually offers a very very compelling case to land retail and to properly elaborate why you guys want to be landing here we're gonna have to take a few steps back and talk about the meta for this season and we're gonna have to go here to caddy corner now caddy corner as you guys may know if you have watched literally any game of competitive fortnite you guys know how overpowered caddy shockwave launcher is but hindo if you want the caddy launcher why don't you land caddy corner well here's the problem entire teams have their entire loot routes dedicated towards third partying landing somewhere else and then rotating into caddy corner this means you're gonna see people coming from gas station weather station top of the mountain and even places like misty now what this means for you guys is that you're not going to always have people instantly killing the boss getting the gun and then leaving what you're going to see is that people are going to have a huge bloodbath in this area for a good three to four minutes after the start of every single match constant unrelenting third parties are going to come through and the expectation here is if you land retail specifically if you land on the west side of retail the house's side we're going to talk more about exact drops in just a second but if you land on this side and you don't even plan on fighting the guys that contest you, you get the hell out of dodge and you have pretty decent loot, you're gonna have a very good chance at being the ones to contest and win caddy corner. Now once again, as we mentioned just a second ago, don't land black tops. Black tops means that you guys want to engage the people at retail. That's not exactly what we're trying to do today. You land at these houses all the way on the edge perimeter west. This house, this house, and this house. Now once you guys get all looted up over there, I want you guys to disengage this retail. Usually if they're looting up at the blacktops, they take longer to loot and get to you than it is to do vice versa. So that means you guys are gonna be very, very well off on your way up this hill before they can even try to third party you. And just as you cross this hill, look at how much of a vantage point you guys get. Didn't take long at all. It only took me like 30 seconds to run from my spot, my drop spot at retail to here. It looks a lot farther than it is. It looks pretty far, but you guys can literally do this with a perfect vantage point once again. Look at this beautiful positioning I have because I'm on top of a hill. I wait for this caddy fight to start, and once it goes underway, you guys are on top of this hill, you guys can fight. You guys can also opt to get right on top of this roof if you want to be more aggressive. Let's say your opponents are really knee deep in the fight and people are getting weak, but not dying yet. Then you guys are going to get on top of this right here, and you're going to finish the fight quicker. Reintroduced back into the game finally is going to be Dirty Docks. Now, I will say that part of the map is still drained, and there's still a lot of water around Dirty Docks. But now there's a viable amount of chests and a viable amount of floor loose. That's going to mean that landing here as a trio is going to pay off a lot of the time now specifically for these next few weeks before the map fully drains out i think a lot of people are not going to want to go dirty docks just because they think it's still not viable one two three four five six seven eight nine chests ten chests and you add in the zipline chest that you know if you're uncontested which you're mostly going to be uncontested you're going to have one person of your trio land on the zip lines you're gonna have 13 maybe even 15 chests so there's not really too much to say about dirty dogs the loot is still pretty decent but it's all exactly what you guys expected from the start once again if you're uncontested which oftentimes you're going to be uncontested you're going to want one of your teammates to land here at the zip lines keep in mind there's multiple chests up top over here if you guys build your way up to the top you guys are going to have two chests right there and don't forget the single chest you have in the middle here accounting for a total of three chests now if the zone pulls south what you guys are going to want to do is just simply go to the boating area and get 
four or five more chests along this rotate. This takes us all the way north to mini junk, which is going to be something that you guys will often see is not looted. Right now, it is still partially underwater, but there is something that you guys can't miss from the spot, which is going to be unlimited materials. Look at this right here. This brick right here gives about 130 mats. Obviously, gives more because we're in a battle lapse. That brick right there gives about 130. There's a couple more bricks that do also give a similar amount. Finally, if you guys didn't get enough metal for some reason at 30 docks, I don't know why you wouldn't because it is one of the best spots for metal. Look at this right here. You can stand on the fences and you can just chop away at them. About 20 metal per fence. It's going to get you guys max metal if you guys do this properly. Finally, on our top five list, there is no chance that I'm going to get to this point in the video and not talk about Fortilla. All you have to do is ensure that you win your off spawn engagement and you are guaranteed to have a good, good session. So we're talking about roughly 40 chests and a lot of floor loot to boot. And something that I need to make aware to you guys, the spawns that come from killing the boss here at Fortilla is also not too bad. It's obviously not OP like the grappler or the shockwave launcher, but let's talk about the gold og, which is still very, very OP. And on top of that, you get the chug jug. It's actually the infinite chug jug, meaning that you guys are never gonna have to waste your kills in the mid game. If you get tagged for 80, you just box it up, pop a chug jug and wait 30 seconds to use it again. You guys are never gonna have to use your healing items until the end game. And once the end game comes through, you drop the chug jug. But this is a free pass to having each and every one of your teammates be 200 HP the moment first, uh, first moving zone starts. So there you guys have it. Five draw spots that I think are absolutely pristine when you're talking about the trio's meta. Once I pick my trio and we start practicing more and more, I'm definitely gonna pick one of these five spots i put my money where my mouth is guys i think these spots are good i think they're solid and they all provide value when you're talking about trios so don't let these solid spots get away from you <laughs> okay guys so that's about it for the video man that's really all i have to share with you guys today if you did enjoy made it to this point in the video i would really appreciate once again for you to like and subscribe to the channel if you're new and i want to start something new on this channel if you guys did make it to the end of the video i want you guys to go down to the comments and go and comment a yellow heart emoji so you'll know everybody else that also made it to the end of the video and that is the real dedicated OGs on my channel. <laughs> Alrighty guys, with that said, much love to all you guys and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.